Please keep your questions coming in if you're online. I've been reading some of the comments as well and there's a lot of love for Mo, Christina and I'm sure Ahmed just now as well. So please keep those coming in. So our next speaker, I've been blessed to hear him last year at Reflect 2022 and also share the stage with you as well. Um, so he started off in aerospace. There's a lot of aerospace going on right now. Um, maybe that's the trick. Maybe you just do aerospace. It seems like that's the way to do it. Um, and you studied at Queen Mary. Someone else said Queen Mary. You said Queen Mary just now, right? Doing a taster, a taster day. Um, and I also realized you did some Formula One related activities in uni as well. So a bit of motorsport in there as well. Um, but now Navjot describes himself as a humanitarian engineer and he founded a company called the Washing Machine Project, which you may have seen as you were coming in. I'm not too sure if it's been placed at the back or so. So does anyone know anyone that has designed a washing machine before? It's a question. Any show of hands? Well, after this talk, you're going to find someone that has designed a washing machine. And it's for a great cause. So he runs a social enterprise that is dedicated to designing and distributing manually hand-cranked uh, washing machines to displaced and low-income people around the world. And I know they're hiring right now. Seems like a rocket ship. So who knows? You might even be able to join that team. I saw an intern. Where's your intern? He's He's over there. You never know. After this talk, ask him for a job, maybe. Um, and they've impacted tens of thousands of people across the world, which is so impressive. Um, so please join me in welcoming Nav to the stage. Hello, everyone. How is everyone doing? Yeah? Can we just get a quick round of applause for all of the three previous speakers? Yeah? I don't know about you, but I feel super inspired already. So uh, I just want to say thank you for inspiring me. Um, now, you see this picture on the, on the telly here. Um, this, is, this is me when I was uh, four years old. And Nav means new in Punjabi, and that's my name. Uh, but my mum likes to call me Navjot. Uh, <laughs> and uh, Navjot means uh, new light. And I've been invited to speak to you for about 10 minutes to share some of my light to you on, on, on how, I, uh, uh, how I navigated my professional career. Um, and I wanted to just start by showing you like, how did I become um, this, grow up from this small kid in, in West London to being featured in over 500 news outlets around the world, having lunch with the Prime Minister during the King's coronation, and having a Netflix episode being created on the journey that we're currently on. But let me take you back to where it all started. This picture was taken in the 90s, and you can see my mum at the back and my two older sisters. My father died when I was very young, but before he did, he used to take me to air shows. And I would be fascinated with how these big aircrafts would go into the sky. I would come home, I'd take the toolbox out of the shed, and I would break everything in sight from fridges to remotes to telephones. I'd always try and fix things and just not be able to. And it used to make my mum so angry. But as you know, my, my father passed away and I had women surrounding me all the time. And I knew firsthand the struggle that women had to go through throughout their lives. And lastly, my mum is from India and she traveled to the UK with five pounds in her pocket in the early 80s. So movement and displacement has always been a theme in my life. So those three themes have shaped my interests. I also did scouts when I was a kid. And scouts really taught me the importance of giving back to society. 
we are one people in a planet of nearly 8 billion. There's more, more people than us in this room. We need to give back, back to society. We need to do good. And Scouts taught me that from a very, very young age. I went to university, but I actually failed my first year. And so it wasn't a very conventional path, I would, I would, have, I would have thought. Um, but you can imagine failing your first year coming from a South Asian family, and my mum was not very happy. So you, the look on, on, on her face on the screen is, is a very genuine reaction of uh, absolute uh, relief. <laughs> So I have four lessons for you, and I believe that I wish I knew these lessons when I was at these phases in my life. So phase one is completing university and getting to that, to that, to that point. And lesson number one is university isn't for everyone. And that's a really controversial um, statement, but I, I really think that this, the experiences that I gained at university and the networks that I built were more so important than anything that I studied. Um, those super skills that I learned. And, and it's important to learn from those uh, experiences. Should we move on to the second phase of my life? Okay. So, who still uses Facebook around there? This is back in the day when Facebook was a thing, you know? Um, <laughs> Sorry. So, so I, so I, I got a graduate job at Dyson within two weeks of graduating, um, and as you can tell, I was very happy about it, and I posted it online, um, and I got to make these really fancy products. Um, so everyone has probably heard of. Dyson, hair dryers, those vacuum cleaners. Um, some things are not even out yet. Those are the things that I worked on. These products are 500 pounds, 600 pounds. And we used to spend hours and hours and hours and hours and hours a day to make these vacuum cleaners more efficient. And that was my life. Um, it was a fascinating experience and I learned a lot. But I, but I realized that all I was doing was making a vacuum cleaner for a rich person. And I wasn't, I wasn't passionate about sucking up dust. <laughs> you know? I didn't want to work on sucking up rubbish all my life. And my lesson number two during this phase was that I needed to fall in love with the, the problem that I was trying to to, to solve, because the solution will always change. And if, if, if you love picking up dust, then great, you should uh, do that. But for me, it's all about falling in love with the problem, because the solution will always change. Lesson number three. What happened then? So I'd been at Dyson for three years. I was fed up of making these 500 pound products that everyone wants. And I decided to quit my job and go work for free in, in South India. I was working in a village making clean and efficient cook stoves. But as you can tell in 2016, my, my eyes, in 2016, I went on Facebook and I announced that I've quit my job and I'm, I'm going to be making uh, cook stoves for, for people who use wood to cook their food. Now, this problem of people cooking wood, uh, people using wood to cook their food, affects 50% of the population. So, straight down the, the, the middle of the room, 50% have gas and electricity, 50% have to forage for wood to cook their food, right now, in 2023. And what I found was, when I moved to South India, to this village, I was very close to, to the user, and every day was uh, a discovery. 
Uh, we would have an idea on Monday. On Tuesday, we'd prototype that idea. On Wednesday, we would put that prototype into the field. And by Thursday, we'd already get feedback as to how rubbish our cook stove really was. And by Friday, we'd already have another idea. So this kind of iterative learning in research and development was really helpful. Um, and we made thousands and thousands of these cook stoves that reduced the emissions, the smoke that people had to breathe when they were cooking um, by 90% and fuel usage by 50%. So I'm here to show you that your engineering could make an amazing sports car and some incredible aircrafts, but they could also save people's fundamental um, rights when it comes to living an everyday healthy life. And this is why it was so important for me. Uh, it was the people that we were positively impacting around the world. This lady, for example, whose husband died six months before this picture was taken, lost the livelihood and the breadwinning in that, in that family and could no longer afford to buy gas. So she would have to forage for wood to cook the food, spending hours and hours and hours a day in those forests just so she could provide for her family. And this is happening every day. And I'm so proud that we can create products for people like her. So when I was in India, I lived in this very rural village. I, this village was such an eye-opening experience for me. Um, water was switched on for 15 minutes in the morning, and if you didn't have a generator, you couldn't use any electricity because there'd be frequent blackouts. And the lady that you see here on the right-hand corner of the screen is a lady called Divya. Now, Divya was my next-door neighbor in the village I was staying in. Her English was amazing, and my Tamil was rubbish. And we became best friends. Every day, we would talk about the day ahead, our problems in life. And she would complain about the stress and strain that she had to go through, through her struggles. Whether it was foraging for wood to cook her food, standing in line for water, or hand washing her family's clothes. These are things that I used to take for granted because I had the products around me that could help me do this. So I said to Divya, why are you spending so much time on this unpaid labor? Let me buy you uh, an electric washing machine. And she said, I don't have a generator and we don't have much water. So even if you buy me an electric washing machine, it's not going to help me. And so this happened. <laughs> And Divya, um, what if you had an easier way to wash? Is it, would it be good? Easy washing. Like a washing machine or something like that. One day I'll give you. I'm I promise you. I will come back here and give you a washing machine. So. 2018 now, the mission is set. I'm going to create a washing machine for Divya. I come back home to London. I call some of my friends to help me develop this washing machine, and I start what is called the Washing Machine Project. Our mission is really simple, and we design low-cost manual washing machines that save time, water, and effort for the millions of Divyas uh, around the world. What did I do next? I reached out to my network, and I tried to understand the problem. So I traveled far and wide. I traveled to 36 countries, interviewing over 3,000 families on washing habits. This is something I had no clue about. I traveled to refugee camps. So this one's in, in Lebanon, on the, on the border of Syria. But I went to Iraq. I went to Jordan. I went to Uganda. I went, to Ken I went all over the world. This is a picture in Somalia. 
And the same story was occurring over and over again. Women, because the role, unfortunately, for unpaid, uh, unpaid labor is, is women. And it's really, really unfair, and it needs to change. And we found that women would spend up to 20 hours a week doing this activity on, on their hands and knees like this. It's painful. So I came home, I invited people to my house, and there was this guy called Richard Hewitt who was very famous on the internet making a washing machine on a bike. So I messaged him on Facebook, and I said, can you come over and let's, can we design something together? Um, and that's when we thought that maybe we could create a salad spinner sort of design for a washing machine. It was in my mum's kitchen. We started prototyping and building these prototypes and these kind of iterations and iterations and iterations later, we have what we have in front of us today, which is a Divya washing machine, named after the inspiration behind the, the organization. So the story here is that we need to ask for support and we need to build a community. And you heard this time and time and time again. If you have an idea, if you want to do something, reach out to people. They are more than willing to help support you. And I'm so proud to, to tell you today that in 2023, we are in eight countries now with these Divya washing machines. We are positively impacting 30,000 lives. And I promise you the best is just yet to come. 2024 is going to be an amazing year. Everyone in this room will at one point, whether it's tomorrow, the next week, or the month after, will walk past someone homeless, whether it's in this city or somewhere else. And I'm so proud that we get to wash homeless people's clothes in, in America and now in the UK and other cities around the world. This wouldn't have happened without RS Group and the grassroots team. And I just want to say a big, big thank you. <laughs> to, to Isabella's team and, and Debbie, who's also in the audience, because we wouldn't have been here without you guys. They've been so supportive to us, taking us around the world, showcasing what good companies around the world can do when they support good initiatives. And I'm so shocked that I get to open up shops nowadays <laughs> because I still don't get trusted with the scissors at home, you know? <laughs> the Washing Machine Project wants to become the Dyson of the humanitarian world. And we're gonna bring together innovation and R&D to help some of those people that you saw. George, the homeless person that you saw, Divya, and the, the people in the orphanage in, in Uganda. So my final lesson is dream big and never stop learning. Last year I graduated in my second degree. So a bit grayer. Thank you very much.